When you're editing your video in Premiere Elements, the vast majority of what you're going to be doing is, well, editing. You're going to be removing things you don't want and arranging what's left in an order that most effectively tells your story. In this session, let's take a look at how to trim and split your clips. We're also going to look at timeline rippling and how to make it work to your advantage. When you add media in quick mode, whether you're adding it directly from a camcorder or whether you're adding media files that are already on your computer, it's added directly to your timeline. In expert mode, your media first goes to the project assets panel where you can then drag it to your timeline. Once your media is on your timeline, you'll want to remove from it things you don't want. And you do that one of two ways. You do that either by trimming the clip or splitting the clip. Trimming the clip means removing video from the beginning or the end of the clip. While splitting means cutting video out from the center. Trimming your video on your timeline works the same whether you're in expert mode or in quick mode. To do it, you hover your mouse over the end point or over the cut, and you notice you get a bracket either facing to the left or facing to the right. When it's facing to the right, any trims you make are going to be made to the clip on your right, and when it's facing to the left, any trims you make are going to be made to the clip on your left. When I trim the clip, watch what happens in the preview monitor above. Click and drag to the left. Notice that what I see are two things. On the left, I'm seeing the new out point. It's changing as I trim. So I can decide exactly where I want the clip to cut. On the right, I'm seeing the first frame of the next video. Likewise, if I were to trim the video on the right, you see that I see not only the new in point, but on the left, I see the last frame of the video that came before it. That's simple trimming. By the way, if you trim from the beginning, you obviously only see your changing endpoint. You don't see any video because there is no video to the left of it here. That's simple trimming, removing video from the beginning or the end of the clip. And as you can see, it works exactly the same in quick view as it does in expert view. We drag in or we drag out. By the way, you notice in the upper right corner of the clips that are on the timeline here in quick view, we see these little things that look like little E's. Those are actually supposed to represent tickers on a timeline. They tell you that a video clip has been trimmed. They appear immediately after a video has been trimmed. The other way to remove video from your clip is to remove it from the inside of a clip or the middle of a clip, and you do that using the split tool. A split tool, again, works the same whether you're in quick view or expert view. We move the CTI playhead into position, and then when we find the place where we're going to cut, we simply hover our mouse over the CTI, and we will see this little pair of scissors. Click on that, and you split your clip. I'm going to undo that with Control z or Command-Z on a Mac. Go over to Expert View. It's exactly the same process. Just hover your mouse over the CTI. When you see the scissors, click, and you split your clip. And, of course, once it's split, you can trim it. Those are the basic moves of editing, but they behave differently depending on whether or not you have video or audio on parallel tracks. Let's take a look. We'll just create a simple project. I'm going to hover my mouse over the top of the timeline here, and you see I get this double-headed arrow. That allows me to expand the timeline, just stretch it up there so we have a little more room to work. And I'll drag a video onto a parallel track, and we'll put some music down on our soundtrack. And I'm also going to drag music onto the narration track just to represent narration because I want you to see how these different tracks behave when we're doing some of these functions. Move my CTI into position. When I have a clip selected among many clips, notice that when I split the clip, it cuts only that clip. I'm going to Control Z or Command Z on a Mac to erase that. If I have no clips selected, I'm going to click off. In other words, I'm going to click out here on the timeline where there are no clips so that none are selected. What do you think is going to happen when I click on the split clip button? When I do, it splits all video and all audio above audio one and video one. So as you can see, it split not only the video on track one, but up on track two, our audio and video also got split. Notice what didn't get split. The narration track and the soundtrack are immune to that split all. All right, I'm going to delete a couple of clips here to simplify the timeline for this demonstration. Whenever we remove a clip from the timeline, the other clips to the right of it are going to ripple. They're all going to move in to fill in that gap. See how it kind of slams shut? If I have clips on parallel tracks, 
as long as the end point or the beginning of the clip is to the right of the clip that I delete, it will ripple also. So rippling when we remove clips is taking all the video that we have that's off to the right and shifting it in to fill in the gap. Now what happens if the end point, for instance, on this clip is to the left, though, of the clip we're going to remove? In that case, it doesn't move. What happens if we want to remove this clip, but we don't want anything else to move on the timeline? We'd like to take this one out, but we don't want things rippling. You can do that by right-clicking on it and selecting the option to delete rather than the option to delete and close gap. When we select delete, now the clip disappears, but nothing ripples. That's a way to override the ripple on the timeline. It gets a little more complicated when you're inserting a clip. So I'm going to control Z, put that clip back in there. Let's create our fake movie again by adding our soundtrack and narration track. Now I want to insert a clip between the first and second clip on video one and audio one. What's it going to do to the other clips that are on the timeline? To position my CTI right at the beginning of that clip, I can use page up and page down. That little command, when the timeline is selected, that command will jump the playhead from cut to cut. So I want to get it right precisely between those two clips. And now I'll insert a clip. When I insert a clip now, the entire timeline splits. Every single track splits and moves off to the side. That sometimes drives people crazy because they put down their audio track, they put down their soundtrack. They don't want it cutting and breaking while they're inserting other clips. I'll show you a trick for overriding it here. I'm going to control Z to get rid of that. Here's how we override it. Rather than drag the clip directly to the timeline, I'm going to hold down the shift key, drag it onto the monitor. When I let go, I get this pop-up menu. And one of the options is insert after this scene. In other words, it's going to insert right where the CTI playhead is located. It still inserts the clip into the movie, but the clips on the narration track and the soundtrack remain unchanged. So that's just a trick there for overriding Ripple when you want to. But generally, Ripple is working to your advantage. It kind of is very intuitive, and as you remove clips, it closes shut. As you add clips, it's moving your whole movie down the movie timeline to make room for the new clip you've added. Now, Premiere Elements does a great job, whether you're working in quick view or expert view, of making splitting and trimming very simple and intuitive. And like those tools, the program's Ripple function is designed to make the process simple and intuitive, too. Knowing how to use these three features alone is going to take you a long way toward mastering the editing process with this program.